Welcome to best practices and techniques for clearing snow off of various intersection layouts. This video is produced by Clear Roads, a consortium of state and local transportation agencies that promotes research of winter maintenance materials, equipment, and methods in real world conditions. Clear Roads strives to identify the most effective techniques and technologies that save agencies money, improve safety, and increase efficiency. Our surface transportation system of highways, roads, and streets handles increasing volumes of vehicle traffic. To meet this demand, engineers developed innovative intersection and interchange configurations to keep traffic moving more efficiently and safely through high volume locations with multiple merging, exiting, and turning points. However, these configurations create quite a challenge for removing snow. Using animations, we'll show best snow plowing practices based on comments from numerous operators, road maintenance supervisors, and highway engineers. This video will demonstrate the recommended methods for clearing snow from the following 10 complex interchange and intersection layouts. Roundabout intersections, four-leg intersections, displaced left turn intersections, median U-turn intersections, roundabout interchanges, single point interchanges, diverging diamond interchanges, cloverleaf interchanges, diamond interchanges, and directional T interchanges. Of course, each agency has unique situations and conditions. There may be differences in the roadway geometrics due to topography, traffic volumes, and density of surrounding area. Other variables that influence an agency's winter road operations include climate, total lane miles, types and numbers of plow vehicles, plow configurations, workforce composition, and levels of service. We also realize that many operators develop their own plowing techniques based on their experiences and equipment. Examples of clearing each of the 10 configurations are presented in the video. These examples were developed based on the best practices identified from a survey study. They provide suggested best setup and plowing patterns for clearing each layout. This does not mean these examples are the only approaches. If agencies use different numbers of trucks or different plow configurations, the number of passes and plowing patterns will be altered. We hope the examples in the video will help improve your efficiency and productivity while ensuring safety and mobility for the public. We understand that there will be additional cleanup in areas like gores and shoulders and that these areas must eventually be cleared. The focus of the examples demonstrated is removing as much snow as possible to open or keep open driving lanes so traffic can move as quickly and efficiently as practical. Before we begin the plowing examples, let's look at what equipment is typically used. Single axle and tandem axle dump trucks fitted with front plows are most commonly used for winter operations. Many agencies also equip their trucks with wing plows on the right side of the truck. Left wing plows are also used to a lesser extent and some agencies have trucks with both right and left wing plows. A smaller number also have underbody plows in addition to front and wing plows. Other types of trucks and equipment such as one-ton pickups, graders, and front-end loaders are used in winter operations on lower volume roads and streets. A growing number of agencies are using tow plows on multi-lane highways. For most of the examples in each module of this training video, we will show trucks with front plows and either a right or left wing plow. The typical clearing width per pass is 11 feet for a truck with a front plow and 14 for a truck with a wing plow. Next, let's briefly review some important points. Safety is always top priority. An operator must stay constantly aware of weather, pavement and traffic conditions, the position of the plows, the presence of roadside structures, obstructions, or other hazards. The operator must also continually monitor material application and a two-way radio. 
Don't let your cell phones distract you from your job. Keep your attention on your work. Adjust your speed to avoid casting snow over bridges or overpasses or too far onto sidewalks. Push snow away from traffic lanes whenever possible so you are not impeding live traffic. And be wary of pavement cross slopes, wind conditions, and other considerations for the route. Remember to flatten out plows through intersections and over bridge decks and to adjust the plow angle when crossing bridge joints and rail crossings. Be alert for steel plates, rough pavement and high manhole or valve box covers. Likewise, when using a wing plow, watch for roadside obstructions such as guardrails, signposts, fire hydrants and mailboxes. Along curves, snow should be pushed to the inside unless that is the high side of the road profile, as in many roundabouts, or if there is no storage on the inside. Now that you are ready to plow snow, let's look at our intersection and interchange examples. The first is a roundabout. We start with the truck at point A as it begins pass 1-1, eastbound in the left or inside lane. The truck has the left wing plow stretched out and the front plow angled to move the snow to the left side to store snow on the outer islands. As the truck enters the interchange at point B, it tucks in the left wing plow and stays in the inside lane but reverses the front plow angle to move snow to the outer or right hand lane. Note that this is done to avoid depositing piled snow on the roundabout itself. This keeps piled snow from restricting visibility and minimizes meltwater running across the lanes and refreezing. The truck continues completely around until arriving at point B, where it then moves over to the outer lane and begins pass 1-2. It continues completely around again, but is now plowing the accumulated snow from both the inside and outside lanes away from the roundabout. Note that after the truck finishes passes 1-1 and 1-2, there is still snow leavings at the entrance and exit of the roundabout. This is bound to happen when using only one truck to plow roundabouts. As mentioned earlier, the goal here is to remove as much snow as possible and keep traffic moving. To clear those leftover areas, additional passes will be needed. As the truck arrives again at point B, it shifts to pass 1-3 in the southbound left or inside lane and re-angles the plow to the left. The left wing is stretched out to plow the inside shoulder. The truck continues south until point C where it makes a U-turn. It proceeds north but does not re-enter the roundabout. Instead, it turns at point D and continues east in the left lane until point E. Before entering the intersection, the truck tucks in the left wing plow and angles the front plow to dump the snow. While passing through the intersection, square the front plow to avoid dragging snow onto the cleared outer lane of the roundabout. The left wing plow is stretched out after passing the intersections. The same maneuver applies to all four intersection points. The truck makes a U-turn and proceeds west in the left lane to point F where it turns north. The truck continues in the left lane with the plow still angled to the left to point G. After making a U-turn, the truck heads south in the left lane to point H. Staying in the left lane, it proceeds west to point A. After making a U-turn, the truck shifts to the right or outside lane, reverses the plow angle to the right, tucks in the left wing plow, stretches out the right wing plow and begins pass 1-4. It will repeat the same pattern as in pass 1-3 while staying in the right lane. Considerations when plowing roundabouts. Don't use wing plows when circling the roundabouts. At some merging and turning spots, you may need to square the front plow and lift or tuck in the wing plow to avoid pushing snow into lanes that have been cleared on previous passes. 
push snow away from the roundabouts to avoid piled snow on the center island, restricting visibility, and to minimize meltwater running across the roundabout lanes and refreezing. As mentioned earlier, the example provides suggested best setup and plowing patterns for clearing roundabouts. If the truck doesn't have a reversible front plow or double wings, additional passes will be required to clear this configuration. This is a typical four-way intersection with dedicated left turn lanes and paved shoulders on all right sides. Many such intersections are signalized, but some may have stop or yield signs. Nonetheless, plow truck operators should be alert when approaching these intersections of the type of traffic control and always anticipate other drivers who may ignore them. In this example, we have a single truck with front and right wing side plows. Many agencies deploy two trucks in echelon to clear snow for this configuration. Our truck begins pass 1-1 at point A at the south end. It proceeds north in the left turn or inside lane with both plows angled to the right. Not completing a left turn, it proceeds straight through the intersection, point E, and shifts to the northbound or inside lane and continues to point B. It turns around and begins pass 1-2, heading southbound in the left turn, inside lane. The plows are still angled to the right. Again, not completing a left turn, it proceeds straight through the intersection, continuing in the southbound inside lane. The truck turns around at point A and begins pass 1-3 by shifting into the northbound left through lane with plows still angled to the right. The wing plow is extended to clear part of the right outside lane. It continues through the intersection, point E, and turns around when it reaches point B at the northern end. After the turn, it shifts to the southbound left through lane and begins pass 1-4. Again, the wing plow is extended to clear part of the right outside lane. It continues through the intersection, point E, and at point A it turns around. The truck starts another pass 1L to proceed in the northbound outside lane through the intersection to point B and turn around to proceed in the southbound outside lane through the intersection back to point A. This pass will clear the snow left at the right lane and right shoulder on the south and north approaches. The truck then turns around at point A and moves north in the right outside lane. Though this has already been plowed in pass 1-3, the operator may keep his plows down to clean up, especially on the shoulder. The truck turns right at the intersection, point E, and begins pass 1-5 heading eastbound on the one lane road with the wing plow clearing the shoulder. When it reaches point C at the eastern end, it turns around and begins pass 1-6. The truck proceeds in the left lane, which turns into a dedicated westbound left turn lane when approaching the intersection. The truck does not complete a left turn. Instead, as it crosses the intersection, it shifts into the right outside westbound lane and continues with pass 1-6. It proceeds to point D where it turns around and heads east beginning pass 1-7. The truck proceeds in the left lane which turns into a left turn bay when approaching the intersection. Again when the truck reaches the intersection it does not complete a left turn. Instead as it crosses the intersection it shifts to the right to the already plowed pass 1-5 eastbound lane. It continues to point C and turns around beginning pass 1-8 to proceed in the right lane heading westbound. It continues through the intersection, point E, to point D over the completed pass 1-6 at the west end. There, it turns around and proceeds in the eastbound right lane to the intersection, point E. For passes 1-6, 1-7, and 1-8, square the plow when approaching the intersection to avoid dragging snow onto the already cleared lanes. A displaced left turn interchange is similar to a typical four-way intersection, except the left turn lanes cross to the opposite sides of the roadway before reaching the intersection. Right turn only lanes are also present in this example. In our example, we use two trucks. Each has a front plow and a right wing plow. 
All lanes of the two at-grade roadways are 12 feet wide with four foot wide shoulders. Note that both roadways are essentially three lanes each direction with dedicated right turn lanes. Approaching the signalized intersection, the inside left through lanes become exclusive left turn lanes, but downstream of the intersection, they revert to through lanes. In this example, truck number one begins pass 11 at point A, the main road near endpoint. In the center lane, using the front plow angled right and right wing plow extended to cover part of the right lane. As it proceeds through the intersection at point E, it shifts to the left lane, then continues to the far end point, point B. Turning around, truck number one continues past 1-1 in the center lane of the opposite direction. At the intersection, point E, it turns right onto the crossroad left lane and continues to point C, the near end point. Following truck number one in formation, Truck number two begins pass 2-1 at point A in the right through lane with front plow angled right and right wing plow extended. It proceeds through the intersection, point E, and continues to point B in the far end point. Turning around, truck number two continues pass 2-1 in the right through lane of the opposite direction. At the intersection, it shifts to the right turn lane turns right onto the crossroad center lane and continues to point C, the crossroad near endpoint. At point C, both trucks turn around, stay in information and continue past 1-1 and 2-1 in the opposite direction of the crossroad. Truck number one in the center lane and truck number two in the right lane with front plows angled right and right plows extended. At point C1, Truck number one shifts to the center lane as it approaches the intersection. It shifts back to the left lane while crossing through the intersection, then continues in the left lane to point D, the crossroads far end point. Truck number two continues past 2-1 in the right lane, proceeds across the intersection and continues to point D. Both trucks turn around at point D and continue past 1-1 and 2-1 in the opposite direction. Truck number 1 in the center lane and truck number 2 in the right through lane. At the intersection, both trucks turn left in formation onto the main road. Truck number 1 in the left lane and truck number 2 in the center lane and continue to point A, the near end point. This completes passes 1-1 and 2-1. After turning around at point A, truck number 1 begins pass 1-2 in the main road left through lane using only the front plow angled right. As it approaches the intersection, the left lane transitions to a dedicated left turn lane at point A1. Note that the left turn lane is now on the opposite side of the roadway. At the intersection, truck number one turns left onto the crossroad center lane and continues to the near end point, point C. Truck number one turns around and continues past 1-2 in the left lane of the opposite direction. At point C1, it enters the dedicated left turn lane. Note that the left turn lane is now on the opposite side of the roadway. It proceeds through the intersection and turns left into the main road center lane and continues to point B, the far end point. After turning around at point A, the main road near end point, truck number two proceeds in the right through lane, point A2, and begins pass 2-2 in the right turn lane using only the front plow angled right. It turns at point A3 onto the crossroad right lane. At point D, the far end point, the truck turns around and continues past 2-2 to point D2. It shifts into the right turn lane, turns right at point D3, and continues in the main road right lane to point B. This completes passes 1-2 and 2-2. Truck number 1 turns around at point B, the main road far end point, and begins pass 1-3 using only the front plow angled right to point B1, the main road left turn lane. Note that the left turn lane is now on the opposite side of the roadway. 
At the intersection, it turns left into the crossroad center through lane and continues with the right wing plow extended. At point D, the crossroad far end point, truck number one turns around, tucks in the right wing plow, enters the opposite direction left turn lane at point D1. Note that the left turn lane is now on the opposite side of the roadway. At the intersection, it turns left into the main road center lane, extends the right wing plow and continues to point A, the near end point. After turning around at point B, the main road far end point, truck number 2 begins pass 2-3 in the right turn lane at point B2, using only the front plow angled right. At point B3, it turns right and continues pass 2-3 in the crossroad right lane to point C, the crossroad near end point. Truck number 2 turns around and proceeds in the right lane of the crossroad opposite direction. Approaching the intersection, it shifts to the right turn lane, turns right, and continues plowing in the main road right lane to point A, the end point. This completes all passes. A median U-turn intersection, MUT, is an at-grade intersection where direct left turn movements are replaced with indirect left turns across a wide median. This provides a much safer and more efficient flow of traffic. Dedicated right turn lanes on the main road also improve safety and mobility. In our example, we use two trucks, one for the four-lane main highway and the other for the two-lane crossroad. Each has a front plow and a right wing plow. The through lanes are 12 feet wide on both the highway and the crossroad. The highway has a four foot wide left shoulder and eight foot wide right shoulders. The crossroad has four foot wide shoulders on both sides. The U-turn ramps are 16 feet wide with four foot wide left shoulders and eight foot wide right shoulders. In this example, truck 1 begins pass 1-1 at point A on the western terminus in the right outside through lane. It proceeds eastbound using the front plow angled to the right and wing plow extended to point B on the eastern terminus. Turning around, the truck continues pass 1-1 now westbound in the right outer through lane. It proceeds through the intersection, still in the right lane. When it reaches point A, it again turns around moves to the right and proceeds eastbound. At point A1, it begins pass 1-2, clearing the dedicated eastbound right turn lane. At the intersection, it shifts left into the eastbound through lane. It proceeds to point B, turns around, moves to the right and continues pass 1-2 at point B1 in the westbound right turn lane. When it reaches the intersection, it returns to the westbound through lane. When the truck reaches point A, it turns and begins pass 1-3 in the eastbound left inside through lane using front plow only angled to the left. It continues through the intersection and proceeds to point B. It turns around and resumes pass 1-3 now in the westbound left through lane. At point A, the truck turns around and proceeds eastbound in the left lane through the intersection. At point E1, it begins pass 1-4, shifting slightly left to clear the gore at the entrance to the U-turn ramp. When the gore ends, the truck cleans the left shoulder with the front plow angled left. At point B, the truck turns around and now proceeds westbound in the left lane through the intersection. Reaching point E3, it resumes pass 1-4 by shifting slightly left and clearing the gore area at the entrance to the U-turn ramp, then continues west, clearing the left shoulder. Returning to point A, the truck turns again and proceeds back to point E1 to begin pass 1-5. Still using only the front plow angled left, the truck enters the U-turn ramp and stays to the right as the ramp curves. At point E2, it merges with westbound traffic, continues through the intersection. At point E3, it enters the westbound U-turn ramp and stays to the right on pass 1-5 as the ramp curves. At point E4, it merges with eastbound traffic, proceeds back to point E1. It re-enters the U-turn ramp and begins pass 1-6, but now stays to the left using left angled front plow only. 
at point E2 it merges with westbound traffic and proceeds to point E3. It enters the U-turn ramp, continuing past 1-6, the truck stays to the left on the inside of the curve and merges with eastbound traffic at point E4. Please note that depending on the location and where the snow is pushed, pass 1-2 for the eastbound and westbound exclusive right turn lanes could be cleared after all the through lanes and the U-turn lanes, passes 1-5 and 1-6, are completed. Truck 2 begins pass 2-1 at point C, the southern terminus, proceeding northbound with the front plow angle to the right and the right wing extended. At point C1, it stops at the intersection. When the eastbound traffic clears, it proceeds across to point C2 on the far side of the median break. After traffic clears, it continues past 21 to point D at the northern terminus. After turning around, the truck begins past 22 in the southbound lane. It stops at point D1 and when westbound traffic clears, proceeds across the median break to point D2. When eastbound traffic is clear, truck 2 proceeds across the intersection and resumes past 22 to completion at point C. The double roundabout interchange provides continuous traffic flow of vehicles entering and exiting the main highway using separated grades for the main highway and the crossroad. Yield signs are used at each entry into the roundabout. Note that plow operators are required to obey all traffic controls. In our example, we use two trucks on the main highway. Each has a front plow and a right wing plow. The through lanes are 12 feet wide on both the highway and the intersecting local road. The highway has four foot wide left shoulders and eight foot wide right shoulders. The two lane local road has four foot wide shoulders on both sides. The off and on ramps are 16 feet wide with four foot wide left shoulders and eight foot wide right shoulders. Note also that small islands or medians that the local road approaches. At point A on the northern terminus, truck 1 begins pass 1-1 in the left inside lane with the front plow angled to the left and the left wing plow extended. Truck 2 begins pass 2-1 in the right outer lane at point A. The front plow is angled to the right and the right wing plow is extended out and slightly behind truck 1. Both trucks proceed in formation southbound to point B in the southern terminus. Turn around and continue, still in formation on passes 1-2 and 2-2 back to point A. They turn around again. Truck 1 begins pass 1-3 at point A1 on the southbound off-ramp with the front plow angled to the right and the right wing plow extended. It continues to point A2 where it tucks in the right wing and enters the west roundabout. It circles the roundabout in the left inner lane at point C3, proceeds eastbound, staying to the left across the local road overpass to point D3. It circles the east roundabout, staying to the left inner part. The front plow is angled right. No wing plow is used. When the truck returns to point D3, it proceeds westbound across the overpass, staying to the left, front plow still angled to the right. When it reaches point C3, it circles around to point C1 and continues past 1-3 onto the southbound on-ramp merging with southbound traffic at point B. Truck 2 starts past 2-4 at point B1, the exit to the northbound off-ramp, with front plow angled right and right wing plow deployed. At point B2, it keeps to the right as it circles the east roundabout. As it completes the loop at point D3, it proceeds across the overpass to point C3, circles the west roundabout, and then continues eastbound in the right lane back to the east roundabout at point D3. The truck circles and enters a northbound on-ramp at point D1, still staying to the left, with front plow angled right and right wing plow out. At point D2, it merges with northbound through lanes. Both trucks return to point A, the northern terminus. Truck 1 begins pass 1L, cleaning the southbound off-ramp right shoulder using the front plow angled right and right wing out.
at point A2, it turns right onto the westbound local road, continues plowing to the right. At point C, it turns around and proceeds eastbound to point C1, where it enters the southbound on-ramp. It continues plowing along the right shoulder to point C2 and merges with southbound through lanes. Truck 1 is finished when it reaches point B. Truck 2 begins pass 2L at point A, clearing the southbound right shoulder using front and wing plows. When it reaches point B, it turns around and continues now clearing the northbound right shoulder. Returning to point A, truck 2 turns around and goes back to point B, turns and then exits at point B1 onto the northbound off-ramp to resume pass 2-1. At point B2, it turns onto the eastbound local road, turns again at point D, and at point D1 enters the northbound on-ramp, still clearing the right shoulder. At point D2, it merges with the northbound through lanes. Truck 2 is complete. In a single point interchange, on and off ramps converge at a central signalized location and can accommodate higher volumes of traffic within tighter right-of-way limits. This allows traffic to operate safer and more efficiently. A single point interchange seems similar to a diamond interchange but with one noticeable and important difference. Instead of two separate and distinct intersections where the off and on ramps meet the overpass, there is just one. This eliminates a set of traffic signals and allows traffic to flow more efficiently. In our example, we start at point A at the west terminus using two trucks. Each has a front and right wing plow capable of clearing a 14 foot span. The plows of both trucks are angled to push snow to the right. The travel lanes on the freeway and the roads are 12 feet wide, but 16 feet wide on the ramps. Shoulders vary in width from 4 feet to 8 feet. Truck number 1 begins pass 1-1 eastbound in the left or inside lane. Truck number 2 begins pass 2-1 in the right or outside lane. Truck number 2 is slightly behind and to the right of truck number 1 so that plowed snow from truck number 1 is picked up and plowed to the shoulder by truck number two. Both trucks proceed eastbound in the formation to point B on the east terminus where they turn around onto the westbound through lanes. Keeping in formation, they continue plowing until reaching point A. Both trucks turn around at point A and proceed to the eastbound off-ramp point A1. Staying in formation, they begin passes 1-2 and 2-2, plowing to the top of the ramp, point A-2. At the signal, they proceed across the overpass in the northbound through lanes to point C at the north terminus. The trucks turn around, remaining in formation, but shift to the two southbound left turn lanes. At the signal, they proceed across the overpass and enter the eastbound on-ramps at point B2. The trucks continue plowing passes 1-2 and 2-2 in formation down the on-ramp, merge onto the highway, and continue to point B. After turning around at point B, the trucks then shift right to the westbound off-ramp at point B1 and begin passes 1-3 and 2-3. Staying in formation, they proceed up the off-ramp to the traffic signal at point B2. On the green signal, they turn left and continue passes 1-3 and 2-3 in the southbound through lanes. When the southbound trucks reach point D at the southern terminus, they turn around and continue passes 1-3 and 2-3 in the northbound left turn lanes. They proceed across the overpass on the green signal and turn left in formation at point A2 to enter the westbound on-ramp. Merging onto the highway, they continue west to point A. After turning around at point A, both trucks then shift right to the eastbound off-ramp at point A1. Staying in formation, they proceed up the off-ramp to the traffic signal at point A2. With wing plow tucked in and front plow lifted, since on-ramp is already cleared. On the green signal, they turn left and continue on the two northbound through lanes to reach point C at the northern terminus.
the trucks turn around and begin passes 1-4 and 2-4 with front plow lowered and with wing plow extended. They plow the two southbound through lanes, proceed across the overpass on the green signal and continue to reach point D at the southern terminus. The trucks turn around and continue passes 1-4 and 2-4 in the two northbound through lanes. They proceed across the overpass on the green signal and continue to reach point C at the northern terminus. Truck number two is dismissed. Truck number one turns around and proceeds to the right outside lane of the southbound on-ramp at point C1. Truck number one begins pass 1-5 to enter the southbound on-ramp. It merges with the ramp's right outside lane at point C2, proceeds to merge on the highway and continues west to point A. It turns around and moves to the far right lane of the eastbound off-ramp at point A1 and proceeds up the ramp, merging with the southbound through lane at point A3. When it reaches point B at the southern terminus, it turns around and shifts at point D1 to the far right northbound lane. It plows the northbound on-ramp and merges with the ramp's right lane at point D2, proceeds to merge onto the highway and continues east to point B. The truck turns around and moves to the far right lane of the westbound off-ramp at point B1 and proceeds up the ramp, merging with the northbound through lane at point B3. Truck number one continues north to point C. This completes all passes. A diverging diamond interchange is similar to a standard diamond interchange, but with one noticeable and important difference. The through lanes on the overpass are reversed. This eliminates conflict on left turn movements with opposing traffic and the need for exclusive left turn traffic signal phases. Traffic flows more efficiently and safely through the two signalized intersections. In our example, we use three trucks. Each has a front reversible and right wing plow capable of clearing a 14 foot span. Two trucks handle the freeway and the third truck the local road above. Both the freeway and the local road are four lane divided. The through lanes on both are 12 feet wide. The ramp lanes are 16 feet wide. The shoulders on the freeway and the ramps are 4 foot left and 8 foot right. Road shoulders are 4 foot wide on both sides. Note that when plowing on the overpass, trucks should reduce speed to prevent projecting snow over the railings to the road below. Both truck 1 and truck 2 start at point A at the western terminus. Truck 1 begins pass 1-1 eastbound in the left or inside lane, with the front plow angled to the left and left wing extended. At the same time, truck 2 begins pass 2-1 eastbound in the right or outside lane. The front plow angled right and the right wing plow extended out along the shoulder. Truck 2 is slightly behind and to the right of truck 1, so the plowed snow from truck 1 is picked up and plowed to the shoulder by truck 2. Both trucks proceed to point B, the east terminus, where they turn around, staying in formation, they continue passes 1-1 and 1-2 in the westbound lanes until completion at point A. Truck 3 starts at point A. It exits to the eastbound off-ramp at point A1 to begin pass 3-1. It stays to the left with front plow angled left and left wing extended. At point A2 the ramp splits. The truck continues pass 3-1 to the left. At point A3, the top of the ramp, the truck turns left onto the northbound left lane, reverses the front plow to angle right, and extending the right wing out. Note the north-south lanes are switched on the overpass. The truck continues past 3-1 on the overpass to point C4 on the north side where it enters the westbound on-ramp. It switches the front plow to angle left, extends the left wing and stays to the left down the ramp past point C2 and then merges with westbound through lanes at point C3. When it reaches point A, it turns, proceeds eastbound, and exits to the eastbound off-ramp at point A1 to begin pass 3-2. Staying to the right with front plow angled right and right wing plow extended, it proceeds to the split at point A2, 
stays right and then merges with the southbound left lane at point A4. The front plow stays angled right and the right wing plow out. It continues to point D at the southern terminus, turns around and continues past 3-2 in the northbound left through lane until point D1. There it moves to the right and enters the eastbound on-ramp. It stays right, proceeds past D2, and at point D3 merges with eastbound through lanes. At point B, it turns around and proceeds westbound, then exits onto the westbound off-ramp at point B1 to begin pass 3-3. The front plow is now angled to the left and left wing plow is extended as the truck stays to the left past the split at point B2. At the top of the ramp, point B3, the truck turns onto the left outside through lane. Keeping the front plow angled left, it crosses the overpass and enters the eastbound on-ramp at point D4. Pass 3-3 continues along the left of the ramp, past the merge at point D2, and then merges onto eastbound through lanes at point D3. At point B, it turns around to westbound. It exits onto the westbound off-ramp at point B1 to begin pass 3-4. The front plow is angled right and the right wing plow is extended as the truck stays to the right along the ramp. At the split, point B2, the truck stays right and at point B4 at the top of the ramp it merges onto the northbound left inner through lane. It proceeds to point C, turns and resumes past 3-4 in the southbound left inner lane. At point C1, it enters the westbound on-ramp and stays to the right past point C2, continues to point C3, where it merges onto the westbound through lane. Reaching point A, it turns and returns to the eastbound off-ramp at point A1. As it approaches the split at point A2, it moves to the right of the island, shifts front plow to the left, extends left wing, and begins pass 3-5 along the southwest island's left shoulder. At point A4, it switches the front plow to the right, extends the right wing plow, and merges with the southbound right outer through lane. It plows this lane and shoulder to point D, where it turns around. It resumes pass 3-5 in the northbound right through lane and then shifts into the northbound left through lane at point D1. Proceeding on the signal at point E, the south end of the overpass, it continues in the northbound right inner lane. Note, the north-south lanes are switched on the overpass. At point C4, the truck moves to the northbound left lane. Proceeding on the signal at point F, the north end of the overpass, pass 3-5 continues in the northbound left lane. At point B-4, it switches to the northbound right outer lane. Reaching point C, the truck turns around and begins pass 3-6 in the southbound right lane. At point C-1, it shifts to the southbound left lane. Proceeding on the signal at point F, it changes the front plow to left angle and extends left wing as it crosses the intersection to point B3. It now moves to the southbound right inner lane and reverses the front plow to the right and right wing out. Note, the north-south lanes are switched on the overpass. It continues past 3-6 to point D4 where it moves over to the southbound left through lane. Proceeding on the signal at point E, the truck stays in the southbound left lane, front plow to the right and right wing plow out. At point D, truck 3 turns around and heads northbound. When it reaches point D1, it begins pass 3-7 in the northbound right outer lane, plows to the right with right wing extended. Proceeding on the signal at point E, it crosses the intersection and continues in the northbound right inside lane. Note, the north-south lanes are switched on the overpass. Proceeding on the signal at point F, it crosses that intersection, plowing to point B4. It then proceeds to point C, turns around, and moves to point C1 to begin pass 3-8 in the southbound right lane. Proceeding on the signal at point F, it crosses the intersection and stays in the southbound right inner lane to point E. Proceeding on the signal, the truck completes pass 3-8 at point A-4, 
then travels to point D and turns around heading northbound. Pass 39 clears snow from the shoulders of each of the four islands at the top of the ramps. Beginning at point D1, truck 3 first plows the south shoulder of the southeast island, front plow angled left, left wing extended, and proceeds down the on-ramp to the merge with eastbound through at D3. At point B, it turns around, exits to the westbound off-ramp at B1. At the split, point B2, it stays to the left, angles the front plow to the right, and clears the south side of the northeast island. It merges onto the southbound left lane at B3 and enters the eastbound on-ramp at D4. It angles the front plow right and extends the right wing as it clears snow from the north side of the southeast island, then merges with eastbound through lanes at D3. When it returns to point B, it turns and again exits to the westbound off-ramp at point B1. At the split, point B2, it angles front plow to the left, extends left wing, stays to the left, and clears the north side of the northeast island. At point B4, it merges with northbound through lanes and proceeds to point C and turns around. The truck continues southbound to point C1 and enters the westbound on-ramp, staying to the left and front plow angled left, left wing extended, it clears the north side of the northwest island. It proceeds down the ramp to point C3 where it merges onto westbound through lanes. At point A, truck 3 turns around and then exits to the eastbound off-ramp at point A1. At the split, point A2, it stays to the left, angles the front plow to the right, extends the right wing and clears the north side of the southwest island. At the top of the ramp, point A3, it turns left onto the northbound through lanes. At point C4, the truck enters the westbound on-ramp, clears the south side of the northwest island. It then continues to point C3 and merges with westbound through traffic. This completes all passes. The Cloverleaf Interchange is very common due to its capability of safely and efficiently moving traffic on and off two intersecting roads on separate grades without use of stop signs or signals. The principal feature is either two or four inner circular ramps set with outer diamond ramps. The loop ramps allow traffic that would normally have to make a left turn from one road to another to do so without crossing opposing traffic. Right turn movements are handled by the outer diamond ramps. Another significant feature of our example is the use of collector distributor lanes or ramps that parallel the main roads through lanes. The CDs provide safer, more efficient flow of traffic. Though the Cloverleaf can handle a lot of traffic, it does have a few significant drawbacks that can be problems for snowplows. Smaller loops of the ramps have tighter turning radii. This requires a sharp drop in speed to avoid tipping or road runoff. The distance between traffic entering from the right from the on-ramp and traffic exiting to the right for the off-ramp is relatively short. At periods of heavy traffic there is much weaving of vehicles trying to merge left onto the roadway while others in the through lanes are slowing down while attempting to move far right to the exit. In our example, a full cloverleaf interchange with CD lanes, the through lanes are 12 feet wide on both the highway and the crossroad with 4 foot wide left shoulders and 8 foot wide right shoulders. The lanes on the off and on ramps are 16 feet wide with 4 foot wide left shoulders and 8 foot wide right shoulders. Truck 1 begins pass 1-1 on the east-west main road at point A, western. It proceeds eastbound in the right outer lane with the front plow angled right and the right wing plow extended to cover the shoulder. Truck 2 also begins pass 2-1 at point A and proceeds in the left inner lane with the front plow angled to the left. Both trucks continue in this manner to point B eastern, turn around and repeat the pattern in the westbound opposite direction of the main road to point A. Note, on the overpasses the truck retracts the wing plow and straightens the front plow to avoid projecting snow over the sides to the roadway below. 
Truck 3 begins past 3-1 on the north-south crossroad at point C, southern. It proceeds northbound in the right outer lane with front plow angled right and the right wing plow extended to cover the shoulder. Truck 4 also begins past 4-1 at point C and proceeds in the left inner lane with front plow angled to the left. Both trucks continue in this manner to point D, northern, turn around, and repeat the pattern in the southbound, opposite direction of the crossroad to point C. Truck 5 begins past 5-1 northbound at point C, southern, in the right lane. At point C1, southeast quadrant, it exits to the outer ramp with front plow angled right and right wing plow extended. At the end of the ramp, point C2, the truck merges onto the eastbound main road and proceeds to point B, eastern. It turns around and continues to point B1, northeast quadrant, and exits onto the outer ramp, still with front plow angled right and right wing plow extended. It proceeds to point B2 where it merges onto the northbound crossroad. At point D, northern, it turns around and then exits at point D1, northwest quadrant, onto the outer ramp and proceeds with front plow angled right and right wing extended to point D2 where it merges with westbound main road. At point A, western, it turns around, proceeds to point A1, southwest quadrant, exits onto the outer ramp still with front plow angled right and right wing extended. It continues to point A2 where it merges with the southbound crossroad. At point C, southern, Truck 5 turns around and exits at point C1 onto the outer ramp, keeping to the left and with front plow angled left to begin past 5-2. At the end of the ramp, point C2, the truck merges onto the eastbound main road. At point B, eastern, the truck turns around and exits at point B1 onto the westbound collector distributor ramp. It proceeds with front plow angled right and right wing plow extended to point D3. Note, when approaching and passing by the openings to the inner loop ramps, the truck straightens the front plow and retracts the wing plow. This prevents snow from piling up in front of the openings. At point D3, the truck merges onto the westbound main road and proceeds to point A western. The truck then turns point A1, exits onto the eastbound outer ramp, then turns to the left onto the eastbound collector distributor ramp. It proceeds with front plow angled right and right wing plow extended to point C3, where it merges onto the eastbound main road. At point B, eastern, the truck turns around and exits onto the northbound outer ramp to begin past 5-3. Using just the front plow angled left, the truck continues past 5-3 on all the outer ramps, repeating the same sequence as in pass 5-1. Truck 5 completes all the outer ramp, comes back at point C, southern, and begins pass 5-4. It exits at point C1 onto the northbound outer ramp, then turns left onto the northbound collector distributor ramp with front plow angled right and right wing plow extended. Note, when approaching and passing by the openings to the inner loop ramps, the truck straightens the front plow and retracts the wing plow. This prevents plowed snow from piling in front of the openings. At point B3, the truck merges with northbound crossroad through traffic, continues to point D northern, and turns around. It exits at point D1 onto the southbound outer ramp and then turns to the left onto the southbound collector distributor ramp to continue past 5-4. At point A3, it merges with the southbound through traffic and proceeds to point C, southern. Note, 
On the overpasses, the truck retracts the wing plow and straightens the front plow to avoid projecting snow over the sides onto the roadway below. The truck turns around at point C to begin pass 5-5 and exits onto the northbound collector distributor ramp at point C-1. It proceeds with front plow angled right and right wing plow extended northeast quadrant where it enters the westbound inner loop ramp. It then goes across and enters the inner loop ramp to the southbound crossroad. It merges onto the southwest quadrant, enters the eastbound inner loop ramp. It goes across to point C3, southeast quadrant, where it enters the northbound inner loop ramp and completes pass 5-5 and then the through traffic at point B3. This completes all passes. The familiar diamond interchange provides continuous traffic flow of vehicles entering and exiting the main highway using separated grades for the main highway and the crossroad. This interchange has been widely used for decades and due to its configuration is comparatively easy to plow. Depending upon topography, density, traffic volumes and other factors, the main highway may be above or below the crossroad. Traffic control where the ramps meet the crossroad may be just stop and yield signs or traffic signals. Nonetheless, the plowing pattern is the same as what we will demonstrate. Note that plow operators are required to obey all traffic controls. In our example, we use two trucks on the major highway. Each has a front plow and a right wing plow. The through lanes are 12 feet wide on both the highway and the intersecting lower road. The highway has four foot wide left shoulders and eight foot wide right shoulders. The two lane local road has four foot wide shoulders on both sides. The lanes on the off and on ramps are 16 feet wide with four foot wide left shoulders and eight foot wide right shoulders. A third truck handles the local road. Note also that small islands or medians are commonly placed where the ramps intersect the crossroad. At point A on the southern terminus, truck 1 begins pass 1-1 in the left inside lane with front plow only angled to the right. Truck 2 begins pass 2-1 in the right outer lane. The front plow is angled to the right and the right wing plow is extended out and slightly behind truck 1. Both trucks proceed in formation northbound to point B at the northern terminus. Turn around and continue, still in formation, back to point A. They again turn around and shift to the right to exit at point A1. They remain in formation on passes 1-2 and 2-2 as they proceed down the northbound off-ramp to point A2 where it intersects with the lower road. When traffic is clear, they proceed across the road to point D1 and enter the northbound on-ramp, still in formation. At point D2, they merge onto the highway and proceed to point B. Both trucks turn around and shift to the right at point B1 and begin passes 1-3 and 2-3 as they proceed down the southbound off-ramp, staying in formation. At point B2, the intersection with the lower road, they wait for traffic clearance and then cross the road and enter the southbound on-ramp at point C1. They continue in formation to point C2 where they merge onto the highway and continue past point A. Truck 3 begins pass 3-1 at point C on the western end, proceeds eastbound with front plow angle to the right and right wing plow extended to point D on the eastern terminus. Truck 3 turns around and continues pass 3-1 back to point C. A directional T interchange differs from a traditional T intersection in that it provides continuous traffic flow of vehicles entering and exiting the main highway. Potential for right angle collisions is eliminated by separated grades using elevated ramps and overpasses. No traffic control signs or signals are needed. In our example, we use two trucks. One has a right front plow and a right wing plow. The other has a front and reversible wing plow.
The through lanes are 12 feet wide on both the highway and the intersecting road. The highway has a 4 foot wide left shoulder and an 8 foot wide right shoulder. The local road above has 4 foot wide shoulders on both sides. The lanes on the off and on ramps are 16 feet wide with 4 foot wide left shoulders and 8 foot wide right shoulders. Truck 1 begins pass 1-1 at point A in the left inside through lane. It proceeds using front plow only angled to the right to point B on the north. It then turns around and continues pass 1-1 in the southbound left lane to point A at the south terminus. It turns around onto the northbound right outside lane and begins pass 1-2. It proceeds north with the right wing plow fully extended. The front plow picks up snow deposited from pass 1-1 plus the snow in the lane it is in and moves it to the right. The wing plow moves it onto the shoulder. Truck 1 proceeds to point B, turns around and continues pass 1-2 in the southbound right lane to point A. Truck 2 begins pass 2-1 at point C at the east terminus. Note that in this example the right wing plow is fully extended. It and the front plow are angled to the right. Truck 2 proceeds west on the overpass. As it enters the banked curve at point C1, it reverses the front plow angle to the left and extends the left wing. Note, this is to deposit the snow to the low side of the curve, thus reducing icing caused by refreeze of melt water from the high side. As the curve straightens and flattens at point C2, truck 2 re-angles the front plow to the right and extends the right wing plow out as it merges onto the southbound right lane of the highway. When it reaches point A, it turns around onto the northbound lanes. Truck 2 enters the northbound off-ramp at point A1 and begins pass 2-2 with both front and right wing plows angled to the right. At the merge with the eastbound ramp at point A2, it shifts to the left lane, retracts the right wing plow, and continues with the front plow only, still angled to the right. When the ramp ends, the truck continues eastbound to point C where it turns around. Headed westbound in the right outside lane with both plows angled to the right, the truck enters the on-ramp at point C4 to begin pass 2-3. It proceeds down the ramp, merges onto the northbound lane, and continues to point B. It turns around and exits to the right onto the southbound off-ramp at point B1. It starts past 2-4 with both plows still angled to the right, but at point B2, at the beginning of the banked curve, the front plow is angled to the left and the left wing is extended. Again, this is to deposit the snow to the low side of the curve. At point B3, the curve straightens and flattens, and the truck reverses the plow angle to the right. At point A2, where the overpass merges with the northbound off-ramp, truck 2 shifts to the right outside lane and continues eastbound to point C. The directional T interchange is now complete, except for additional cleanup along some shoulders and at gore areas. In the preceding sections, we've described the recommended best practices for clearing snow from 10 different interchanges and intersections. These can be very complex and challenging, especially during intense snowstorms. Of course, how you handle these will depend upon many various factors such as vehicles and equipment, agency standards and protocols, roadway geometrics, topography, traffic volumes and weather conditions. Most critical though is how you apply your experience, training and good judgment to provide safety and mobility to drivers in a reasonable time with the resources you have. Nearly all agencies conduct preseason dry runs so that the operators become familiar with their routes and work out solutions to more difficult layouts. Operators should note any locations or situations, such as major construction work, that might require modifying a route. If you will be working with one or more partners, review the patterns before running the route each storm. Ideally, a practice run would also be held at night as plowing operations often occur during hours of darkness. Let's review some key points we covered. Always remember to make safety, yours, 
your co-workers and the public the top priority. Do a thorough check on your truck before leaving the yard at the beginning of the shift and each time you return for fuel or material. Stay alert. Operating a plow truck requires your full concentration and constant attention to traffic, pavement, and weather conditions. Long hours behind the wheel cause fatigue and tedium, but a moment's distraction can result in a serious crash. And though you may feel urgency in completing your assigned route, driving too fast is dangerous. Do not use a cell phone while driving. Lower speed to avoid casting snow over bridges or overpasses or too far onto sidewalks. Push snow away from traffic lanes whenever possible to avoid obstructing the traffic flow. Be aware of the pavement cross slope, wind conditions and other considerations for the route. Straighten plow angle through intersections and on bridge and overpass decks. Increase the plow angle when crossing bridge joints and rail crossings to avoid tripping the plow. Be alert for steel plates, rough pavement, and manholes or valve box covers that may trip the plow. When using a wing plow, watch for roadside obstructions such as guardrails, signposts, fire hydrants, and mailboxes. Along curves, push snow to the low side whenever possible. Watch for pedestrians in the roadway and stalled vehicles. By following these pointers and the techniques shown for clearing snow from complicated interchanges, you will be able to handle your route efficiently, effectively, and safely. On behalf of the Clear Roads Consortium, thanks for watching this video. We hope that you've gained useful knowledge and practical tips that will help you out on the road. Keep on plowing! We depend on you.